We can start it with the power off. We can start it with the power on. Another roller coaster, baby. Woo! All gas, no brakes. How to do a power on stall. Let go. Boom. Hey, before we talk about the mechanics of the maneuver, first understand why are you being even asked to learn how to do a power on stall. Just like the power off stall, if the power off stall was to prepare you for any kind of conditions that you may be in on landing when the power is off and you've exceeded that angle of attack and you can possibly be in a stalling configuration, if power off is in relation to landing, then what do you think power on is in relation to? A power on stall is in relation to departure. So think about yourself being on departure. You got the power full in, you're departing, you're at that angle, you're going very nice, everything's going good, but then you exceed that angle of attack and you pull back too much and you find yourself in a stalling situation. This is what this is preparing you for. Not to get into that situation, but if you happen to do so, do the various circumstances, knowing what it feels like and knowing how to get out of it. That's what learning the power on stall is all about. Hang on. Boom! Before you do anything, you know the routine. You got to do cast before you do any maneuver. That's clearing turns, altitude, and safety area. Always check those three off your list before you attempt to perform any maneuver. When all that's good, you're good. Hey, 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 let go! The power on stall, just like any other flight maneuver, it's all about the setup. The same way when you come in for a landing, the landing is all about the setup. The flight maneuver, any one that you perform, it's all about the setup. Every time you want to set yourself up for success. So the best way to do this for a power on stall is to make sure you got to slow the plane down first before putting the power in. That's one of the keys. Don't think just because this is a power on stall and you already have the power in full way, you're just going to go from that configuration and just start to pull back. Slow the plane down first pull some of the power back, and then you can start to set yourself up before you push the power in. Because remember, this is supposed to simulate you on departure. When you're departing and you're trying to fly in that nice angle, that nice VX, VY for you to get out, but you just happen to exceed that angle of attack and get into a stall. So this is kind of what this is supposed to be simulating. So when you think about it from that aspect, slow the plane down when you're out there first and get it into the right configuration, then you can do that. So let's just say you're going along and you've done your clearing turns, everything's all good, and then you start to slow the plane down. So the, one of the first steps you wanna do when you slow the plane down, as you, of course, pull that power back a little bit to about 1700, you got that carb heat, you're gonna pull that out, everything's starting to slow down now. You're pitching up at a nice angle, everything is slowing down, everything is looking beautiful, everything is doing what everything's supposed to be doing. Your feet is on the rudder pedals, they dancing like doing the merengue, boom, 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 bada bing, bada boom! And it's all looking good, baby. All right then, so now you're getting ready to do your power on stall. So once you got it at a nice airspeed, preferably the airspeed that you're gonna be at on departure. So find that same kind of airspeed that you like to climb out in and kind of sit right there with that airspeed on your pitch. Now, start to work back in that power. And then of course, carb heat, push that back in. And now you got that full power in there and start to pull back on it, holding that airspeed and can continue to exceed and pull back and pull back and pull back. Make sure when you go back straight and you got that power in like that, feet on a lot of right rudder. The reason why, just think about where you're in when you're in this position right here. Think about everything that's happened. You had the power out a little bit and then you pushed it in, so now you got torque effect. That's a left turning tendency. Now you got that P factor here where the right propeller on the right side is biting off more of the air because of the angle of attack. That's more left turning tendency. So you really got to be on those right pedals because if you're not, then it's going to want to do this. It's going to want to lean to the left and you don't want that because that's as easily how you can get into a spin. If you want to avoid the spin, straight back, straight down. Straight back, straight down. No turning effect. So you want to make sure you're keeping your head, thinking about that sight picture on the outside, thinking about that heading, glancing at that right rudder, doing whatever you have to do on those rudder pedals to keep it straight at all times and make sure as you're pitching back that it's going straight back. And the same sequence of events that happens with the power off stall are gonna happen with the power on stall. We talked about how the stall happens in stages. It's three stages to a stall. So as long as you remember those stages and remember to call it out, it's gonna give you a great sense of situational awareness. So as you're pitching back and you're doing your thing and you're on that right rudder and everything's going nice and smooth with it, then what are, what are those three stages that you gotta 
remember, of course, the stalling horn is going to be the first one. It's just a stall warning horn. You have not stalled yet, but you want to acknowledge the stall warning horn. Then you're going to keep going back, keep going back, keep going back. Sight picture, you're checking that. Everything's straight. Heading's good. Right rudder, I'm keeping this thing straight. I'm pulling back, I'm pulling back, I'm pulling back. And then I get a little bit of what? I get a little bit of buffeting. I get that buffeting effect. You still have not stalled yet. You're just buffeting. What does the buffeting even mean? It means that the air is no longer connecting smoothly to the wings. It's starting to detach itself from the wing, that relative wind that's coming across. And that's what's causing it to do this. It's not attached smoothly and clearly, so it's not getting that clean lift. So you keep going back a little bit more, and then it's going to break. And when it breaks, what is it going to do? Boop! It's going to come right back down into position. It recovers itself. You just have to guide it to make sure it doesn't go off to the left, it doesn't go off to the right, and it doesn't nosedive. You just want it to go straight down. The reason why it kind of recovers itself, particularly in a single engine plane, think about where all the weight is. The weight in this plane is in the front on the nose because that's where the engine is. That's the heaviest part. So if it was being pitched back like here and everything was connecting fine because the wind was hitting it, but it lost its connection with the with the wing and the relative wind and it lost that, that was the only thing that was keeping it lifted and held up, all the weight on the front end is going to cause the plane to do what? This. So it kind of recovers itself. All you have to do is make sure it just stays here. And it doesn't exceed this and it doesn't veer off to the left or veer off to the right. That's where pushing back down, keeping that nose straight and level and keeping your feet on those rudder pedals. It's easy to kind of get caught up in the mechanics and everything of this. But if you really want to make it easy in your mind, think about this one thing between power on and power off stall. The power on stall, you can try and make it easier or trick yourself into thinking that it's easier. It really is easier for you and it should be easier because it's only it's one less step than what you have to do on the power off stall. On the power off stall, it's two things you have to do. You have to push the nose back down while simultaneously putting back in the power. On the power on stall, the power is already in. So there is no power adjustment. You're just controlling the nose. So it's one less thing to worry about. So look at it from that perspective and kind of think that optimistically and that positively about it. Like it's one less thing for me to worry about. All I have to worry about is controlling the nose and make sure it comes back down in coordination and everything in line. And then boom, you're fine. Boom, check it on that recovery. When you guide that nose back down and you nice and straight and level at this very moment, you're still in recovery mode. Allow the relative wind to reattach itself back to the wings and you start to establish a positive rate of climb. That's very key. You don't want to start, you, you've gotten to this point, you're at the very end and then you start just doing all kinds of crazy. Allow the wind to get back over those wings nice and smooth. You're going to feel it and you're going to see it on your instruments with that established, reestablished, nice positive rate of climb and then do what you do, baby. Let it do what it do. Hey, boom, check it. You know the vibe. When you learn a lot of this stuff, particularly when it comes to power on stalls, power off stalls, this isn't something that you just, after you get your pilot's license, you're going to be jumping in the plane, going around flying, doing stalls all over the place. That's not the purpose. The purpose is for you to understand what it feels like. So if you ever in that position, you understand how to recover from it. You understand the three stages of stall. You understand that, oh, okay, I'm going to hit a stall warning horn first, then I'm going to get the buffeting. Then I'm going to hit the brake. And I understand if you were to get to that point, how to recover from it. Because this can easily happen on a landing or departure. Here's a simple way that a power on stall can simply happen on a nice basic departure. You can be departing out. Everything can be going fine. And then you can be, boom, lift off off the ground. And as you're pulling back, as you're pulling back, your seat just slides back accidentally. Because maybe it wasn't t attached down and in the lock position that where it should be. And it just slides back and you pull back too much and now all of a sudden you can see the angle of attack. Now what? You got a stall going on and you got to push that nose down and know how to recover from it. So those kind of simple situations, let's just say you had a load, but the load wasn't tied down properly. And when you started to pull back, the weight in the aircraft shifted and then it started to get you into a stall situation. Any and everything can happen at any given time, so you always want to be prepared for it. So you every all every time you think about these things, think about the why you're asked to learn these things, and then how they can be implemented in just regular everyday flying, and why you want to be conscious of them as you go along. Hey, don't forget to like this video, comment on this video, share this video, and subscribe to this channel. 
I am Donovan Batiste, and this is Leadership Mindset, a place where you can always come for free information about everything that you need to know to become a pilot. I want you to feel what pilots all over the world feel when we swinging and banging that thing. If you're already a pilot, you can use any of this information to stay current, to stay proficient. Hey, love you one time. Subscribe to this channel. Let go.